This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at video compression comparing Apple Compressor with Adobe Media Encoder. In this excerpt, I'll show you some of the new features inside Adobe Media Encoder version 2014.1. The new features in the latest version of Adobe Media Encoder include an updated interface and the ability to encode and decode GoPro Cineform. GoPro Cineform gives us really high quality video and the ability to support an alpha channel, which means moving files between applications, finally has a, a good intermediate codec that we can use for Adobe products. We've been using ProRes 422 and ProRes 4x4 for compressor for a long time. Now we have parity on Media Encoder. Media Encoder also supports new match source options for both QuickTime and MXF OP1A exports. It has always been able to send files to an FTP site. Now you can send files to Creative Cloud folders. And for those of you creating DVDs, in the past we would create what's called an MPEG-2 elemental, a file that's specific for video and a second file that's specific for audio. Now, during the encode, the compression process, we can mux, combine both the audio and the video into a single multiplexed file, which is necessary for burning to a DVD. And we can now save ourselves time and conserve disk space by muxing during encode. AME now supports high DPI, which are also called retina displays, and the ability to encode, compress, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Final Cut 7 XML projects. You don't have to export the file anymore. You can simply create the XML project, which can be done in a heartbeat, bring the XML into the watch folder, and Media Encoder will encode it. It also supports a constant bitrate compression for Sony XAVC. Constant bitrate yields faster encodes, though not necessarily higher quality images. And for those of you working with digital cinema packages, DCP, you can now export a 25 frame per second option. This is the brand new interface for Adobe Media Encoder CC 2014.1. <laughs> the October 2014 release. It has the same basic interface except the screens are much darker. Instead of a brownish gray, it's more of a, a rich dark gray. And instead of having orange highlights, windows are now outlined in blue because blue is the new cool color. The same four windows are here. The, the ability to load files into the queue, top left, presets in the top right, watch folders in the bottom right, and the monitoring of encoding in the lower left. So those are the same as earlier versions of Media Encoder and at its base it runs the same way. There's multiple ways that we can add files. You could click the plus key, you could go up to file, select add source, use the keyboard shortcut command one, but even though I'm a keyboard shortcut junkie, when it comes to Media Encoder I'm most often dragging files in. So I'm going to start with this sea turtle here and drag it in. Now for those of you who are using compressor and wondering why is Larry showing me media encoder, there's two reasons. The first is when I'm encoding an MPEG-4 movie, media encoder is anywhere from three to six times faster than compressor. When I'm compressing for QuickTime, I get smaller file sizes and higher quality with compressor than I do with media encoder. But I also don't want to have to wait seven months to get this stuff done. And the speed of the hardware acceleration that Adobe Media Encoder has just blows the doors off compressor for right now. Where compressor will take eight to nine hours to compress a one hour movie, I can get it done in about 45 minutes with Media Encoder. This is a big savings in time. So for this reason, I do compression in both. Okay, several things to think about here. Number one, when I have multiple pieces of video to compress, multiple sources, this source will compress, and then that source will compress, and then that source will compress. Sources compress one after the other, what's called serial. If, on the other hand, I have, let me just grab this, drag a YouTube setting here. If I have, and I'm just doing this for dramatic effect, if I have multiple compression outputs assigned to the single source, 
all three of these will compress at the same time. Multiple settings compress in parallel. Multiple sources compress in serial. If you need to delete a setting, highlight the line, say yes, delete it. Highlight the line, say yes, delete it. So we'll delete that. If you need to replace a setting, for instance here I want to replace a setting, grab the setting you want to replace it with, just drag it on top, and you've replaced the setting one with the other. To create a new setting, we go up to here under Preset Browser, and I want to go through some of the choices so you understand what we have to work with. To create a new setting, we'll click the plus key and it opens up the new setting window. One piece that's missing, notice up here there's no option to match the setting of the sequence. There will be, when I show this to you in Premiere, there is not here. So first let's give this a, a name, we'll call this um, MP4 for website. And format is going to be H.264. Look at all the different choices. Click on H.264. Oh, oh, look at this. If I change the format to QuickTime, okay, when I hold the QuickTime pop-up down, look at these three choices. This is where the GoPro Cineform comes in. If you are shooting video and you don't need to retain the alpha channel, which means you don't need to retain transparency, select Match Source GoPro Cineform. If you need to retain the alpha channel, the transparency information, so you can key one movie into another, then you need to take one of these two settings, Cineform with alpha channel, or Cineform with alpha channel, and a much deeper bit depth. This is 8-bit, which is standard video. This is 16-bit. This would be roughly, not quite the same, but roughly equivalent to uh, Apple ProRes 4x4, and this is Apple ProRes 4x4XQ. It's not totally true, but it's analogous to that. This is ProRes 422. This is ProRes 4x4. This is ProRes 4x4XQ. The point here is that because Cineform runs on both Windows and Mac and runs equally between, it's supported on both uh, uh, After Effects and Premiere Adobe Media Encoder, we could load it up into uh, Final Cut Pro 10. It becomes what I call an intermediate codec, really, really high quality for moving files from one application to another. This is brand new. This showed up in the Monday release of Media Encoder, and it's huge. First, you select QuickTime, because it's done inside a QuickTime wrapper. You select QuickTime, then inside that, you would select GoPro Cineform based upon what your needs are. We can export audio by checking that video, and then there's a summary, what's going on. What's new is down here we have some additional settings. The Publish button is brand new. Publish allows me to send the, the compressed file directly to my FTP site, preloaded to my website, by entering the username, password, and server. Or I can also send it to my Creative Cloud folder by entering my Creative Cloud folder here. The Creative Cloud part is new. FTP has been here for a while. There's two schools of thought. When I'm in a really big hurry, being able to simply compress the file and send it to an FTP or Creative Cloud folder is a big benefit. But generally what's happening is when I compress the file, this is getting ready for final distribution, and I want to make sure that everything looks good. I always want to spot check at the very least or watch my entire compressed file to make sure that it looks good. I generally don't want to transfer it to an FTP site until after it's gone through that one last review cycle. Because of that, I tend to want to do this in two steps. Compress the file, review the file, then send the file up to my website via FTP. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar comparing Apple Compressor and Adobe Media Encoder. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 138. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 800 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free.
Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. And thanks.